Hello and welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we're going to be tackling a puzzle called Dots and Stripes by G.B. Pack, which might be a reference to the Green Bay Packers. Um, now, I'm going to stop talking about the Green Bay Packers now because I know so little about American football. I hope that they are American football. I think they are an American football team. I want to say that was Aaron, was Aaron Rodgers, is it Aaron or Aaron Rodgers? Did he play for the Green Bay Packers? Or does he play for the Green Bay Packers? I don't know. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm going to show all sorts of ignorance if we get into this topic. But anyway, uh, this is by GB Pack. Um, and it, I mean, it's a startlingly sparse grid. I, I have read the rules and there's not a lot going on beyond what you can see. We've got some thermometers and some dots and that that is literally all. Four dots, four thermometers is apparently enough to disambiguate the puzzle. I will tell you that um, two of our testers had a look at this puzzle and one of them couldn't do it at all. So there is something clever about it for sure. Um, uh, although it's only got three stars out of five for difficulty on Logic Masters Germany. So anyway, I'll read the, I'll read you the rules in a moment or two's time. I've got loads of things to tell you about first. I'm going to start by saying a massive, massive congratulations to James and to Emily who did get engaged last night. Uh, any of you who saw last night's puzzle, I'm spoiling it a bit if you haven't seen it yet, but basically um, the puzzle is said to be by Joe Bloggs. Uh, it wasn't by Joe Bloggs, it was by James. Um, and at the end of the puzzle, the coloured letters or the coloured cells in the grid spelled out the alphanumeric equivalent of will you marry me? So it was um, sort of a proposal Sudoku. Um, and yeah, Emily said, said, said yes last night. So we are delighted for them both. Uh, congratulations. And um, we don't expect an invite to the wedding, but maybe you could send us a picture. That would be that would be lovely to see. Um, now, next, oh, I'm going to share with you. Those of you who've been watching the channel for any amount of time will know I have a love of the poet Brian Bilston. I consider him to be a rarefied linguistic genius. And um, hang on, have I got it here? Oh, no, no, Simon, you must have it. You must have it. I had to go and find it. Sorry, I knew, I knew I'd, I'd snipped it from the internet. Um, but then I realised I hadn't actually loaded up the picture. Um, and this was posted by Brian uh, a day or so ad ago to sort of announce the arrival of autumn into all our lives, or some of our lives anyway, depending on which hemisphere you live in. Um, but it's called, it's a poem called The Problem of Writing Poems in the Shape of Deciduous Trees. And a common problem when writing poems in the shape of deciduous trees is that once there arrives the first stirrings of the new autumn breeze, the poems will begin to shake themselves gently until their letters loosen like leaves, and they start to float down, then turn to mush upon the ground. Which is lovely. I mean, it's lovely language, but what I especially love about it, obviously, is it this poem is written in the shape of a deciduous tree, and the letters that have dropped out so there's sort of the O here you can see it's sort of it's found in this anagram at the bottom turned to mush upon the ground uh, it's just it's just lovely it's just lovely it's sort of I don't know it makes me feel nostalgic for some reason but Brian Bilston do check him out if you have any interest in poetry at all there's, there's an awful lot to admire now next I have to tell you uh, this video is sponsored by Jane Street uh, who we've been delighted to see are so committed uh, to puzzling and the joys of puzzle solving. Indeed, uh, we saw their star battle featured in the latest um, video from Number File. Um, and I know I know a lot of our of our audience are fans of the YouTube channel Number File. Um, indeed, I am a fan of the YouTube channel Number File. And their latest uh, their latest uh, video on on Number File, uh, which is about moles climbing towards the stars. Um, has a puzzle at the end set by Jane Street. It is a star battle puzzle. And we have had lots and lots of requests um, for us to tackle that puzzle. Um, so what I would recommend you do is you keep an eye on the channel tomorrow morning, where maybe at 10.30 a.m. UK time, uh, you might be able to see a video where we attempt to do just that. Um, so, so check that out. And I also need to let you know that Jane Street um, is currently accepting applications for their 2024 summer internship programs in New York, London and Hong Kong. You don't need a background in finance to apply. 
you just basically have to be um, you have to have a love of solving puzzles and problems uh, have be excited to learn and have a curios curiosity of spirit and I think an awful lot of cracking the cryptic vid um, cracking the cryptic viewers and puzzle solvers um, may fit that bill um, I think the internships last for 10 to 12 weeks um, over the summer months well May to September um, and um, yeah, check them out. I, I will tr I will put a link under this video um, to where you can go on their website and apply for the internships should you be interested. Um, now, next, what I, what else have I got to tell you about? I'm going to do birthdays next. I've got a few birthdays and one anniversary to do today. So, Gnome, it's your birthday today. You're, you've turned 15 over there in Israel. And your sister, I know this because your sister Leel wrote to us. And it's Leel's 19th birthday tomorrow. So, I'll say happy birthday to Gnome. Um, I hope you have chocolate cake, obviously. And um, happy birthday to Leel for tomorrow. Um, next, it's Helen's birthday over there in Norway. And I know this, Helen, because your boyfriend, Roman, wrote to us and said you'd appreciate a shout out and next it's Matthew's birthday Matthew you might be in Mississippi but I'm judging uh, I'm judging that from your mum's uh, email address so I might have got that wrong but your mum Dawn and your sister Brennan wanted to wish you a very happy birthday so happy birthday Matthew and then finally an anniversary for Zelda and Brandon um, and apparently they watch almost every night um, so many, well, happy anniversary to, to you both. I think that that calls for cake as well, doesn't it? And um, I hope that that cake that you get has the correct ratio of icing. Uh, to cake, which is of course one to one. Um, anyway, that's all the news. Let's have a look at Dots and Stripes by GB Pack, and I will read you. Um, I'll read you the rules. They are as follows. We've got normal Sudoku rules apply. So we have to put the digits one to nine once each and into every row, every column, and every three by three box. Digits along thermometers increase from the bulb end. So let's imagine that square is a two. This square has to be higher than two. So just as mercury rises in a real thermometer as the temperature rises, so digits must rise as we rise along Sudoku thermometers. They don't have to rise by one each time, so they could rise by, you know, we could have something like that. That would be a legitimate way of filling that thermometer. Um, cells separated by a white dot contain consecutive digits. So if that square was a two, this square would have to be a one or a three in order to be consecutive with two. That's how white dots work. Cells separated by a black dot contain digits in a one to two ratio, i.e. one digit is double the other. So if this square here was a two, this square here could be a one or a four, ah, not a three, a four, in order to make sure that one digit is double the other. And not all possible black or white dots are given. So it's perfectly possible to have consecutive dominoes in other parts of the grid or digits in a one to two ratio elsewhere. It's just we know for certain that these these dominoes have the properties that I explained. And that is all the rules. So do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. I can only see one thing immediately at the start of this puzzle. Um, okay, what what Mark would do, I'm sure, is to pencil, fully pencil mark these six cell thermometers. I'm, I'm, am I going to do? No, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to tell you what I've seen first, which is that I can see in the bottom three rows here we have got roping. What, you might say, is roping in a Sudoku puzzle? Well, it's this peculiar phenomenon where if we, if we know that these three digits, and we do know in this instance, let's look at those three digits and ask where those three digits go in box eight. Now, because digits have to rise along the thermometers, there's no way any of these three digits appear in those three squares. And they clearly don't appear in these three squares because by Sudoku, that would lead to a a repeated digit. So those three digits, whatever they are, have to go in those three squares and therefore they have to go in those three squares into row eight. And now we can just repeat that exercise because we can ask where these three squares go in box eight. These three digits are clearly not green, otherwise green would repeat in box seven, so they must go there 
and then by Sudoku they've got to go there and then we can do exactly the same thing with those digits uh, should we go yellow or orange I think I'll go orange um, and, and this pattern is called roping I don't I don't know why I don't know who came up with that 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 description but it is it sort of feels right I guess it's to do with the way is that to do with the way ropes are made you twist the cords or something um, now <laughs> what, what exactly has that done if anything um, I want to say it's restricted well it has actually okay so it's restricted the black dot here if we think about digits that can go on black dot dominoes in Sudoku we can have a one that can partner a two, two can partner one or four, three can partner six and four can partner eight. But I think the point here is that the minimum value of orange in terms of the thermometer is, is four, isn't it? Because even, even if we put one, two, three on the green thermometer, we'd still get to at least four by the time we hit the orange cells. So this, this is made up of digits that are four or higher. And the only, therefore, the only pair that we can use is a 4-8 pair. Um, right, and then, <laughs> okay, so that bounces back again. So in this box, we now know one of these three digits is a 4. And it's not going to be these two, because then that would have to be a 0 uh, or less. So that's going to be a 4, and we have our first digit. Um, and 8 has to be... Okay, 8 can be in either of those squares. Actually, if that was 8, that could be 9, couldn't it? And then that would be 9. But if that's 8, then that's 5, 6, or 7. And the right green, we now know, because they have to be digits less than um, less than 4. So we're sort of we're sort of making a start here. Which is going to right I see so now okay now mark I am prepared to pencil mark this thermometer because it's got slightly more restricted you can't put one in its bulb anymore so previously each of these these cells along this thermometer had four different options this could have been one two three or four it could be four five six seven eight nine so it can't be more than four but now, because one can't go in the bulb, it's only got three options. So that's, that seems perfectly reasonable to pencil mark. So that's two, three, or four. So that's three, four, or five. And we have we can just go along the thermo like that. And, okay. And we haven't quite got the same roping here, have we? Those two digits... Obviously, they can't repeat along their own thermometer, and they can't go in their own row. So they're in two of these three squares. So one of them, at least, is on this white dot domino. But there's nothing preventing these from being consecutive digits. Um... Sorry, I'm not... I think it's going to be this thermometer that we have to think about. I'm not quite seeing... Uh, I'm not quite seeing how to do it. <laughs> Let me just mull this for a second. Um, I don't think these other thermometers are long enough to do very much. Again... It looks like they want to cause roping, but they don't quite manage it. Then this, you know, the lack of the extra cell here is really difficult because those two digits are up there and then they're in two of these three positions. These three digits, they're not forced into those three squares. They can escape to this one. I just don't think that's going to be... Actually, this one might be better because it it at least well. It, all I'm thinking is, I, I know something about this box. Let me think about that for a second. So these two digits have to go in those three squares, and therefore these two digits have to be in 
two of these three squares. What's what's blue? Do we know what blue is? Blue is any number that's not one, two, three, or four or eight. Okay, let's 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 bite the bullet here. Five, six, seven, or nine. So yellow. Yeah, but um, okay, the second yellow digit. Let's look at that because the first yellow digit could easily map to this green cell, couldn't it? And be a one, two or a three. But then the second yellow digit has to be either this digit or this digit by Sudoku because these two cells are in these two of these three. So they're in two of these three. So we can map one of them to this one. But the second one has to, it can't be, this can't be a one, two, or, or it can't be a two or a three. It's got to be at least a four. And if that's got to be at least a four, then this is at least a five, six, seven. So these squares only have a few options each. Ah, um, oh, nearly. If that's eight now, no, that doesn't fix these, does it? Uh, or Well, if that is eight, then you get a quintuple in this column. Um, if this is eight. That might break the world, actually. That feels like that's doing some... I, f I feel like I've not got... If that's eight... The minimum value of this then can't be four, can it? That goes up to five. So this goes, these are from, these would be a six, seven, nine. Oh, that can be a five. Yeah, this could be a six, seven, nine triple. That would be eight. And that five would be that digit. And that would be a one, two or three. Bobbins, Bobbins, Bobbins face. That's so annoying. Um, so it, um, that's weird. So these squares would be, for, there would be a four in one of these squares. That would knock four off the black dot. There's lots of little tiny interactions here. I'm also wondering now about rows four. Well, no, row, row four looks the best bet, probably. These three digits are all for at least five. I'm, I think I'm still missing missing the trick here. I have to tell you, I am not. I'm not understanding this. What about, actually? What about those digits instead? Rather than looking at these two, what about those three? Yeah, yeah, that does it. Right. OK, we can do something with these three digits. Let's give them a new color. Let's make those red for a second. Um, where did those three digits go in this column? Now, they're obviously not red digits can't go in their own box and they can't go on their own thermometer. And they're not one, two or three. So red maps to exactly those three digits so that and that means this digit can't be a four because no no red digit can be a four so that digit is an eight that's okay so there probably was a way i could rule eight out of this square before i just couldn't see it and that's annoying sorry if, if you were all shouting at me i didn't mean to not understand that um Ah, okay, this is big. That digit's now available to us because it can't be eight. And the only other black dot digit that's that's selectable from these squares is six. So that's six. This is three. Ah, no, that's three. That's the only way of forming a one to two ra ratio with a six from a Sudoku perspective. Three, three in column nine is now very restricted. It can't go there. It doesn't seem to be red, so it must go there. Right, so now we know, okay, so now we know that this thermometer does have six on it. So there is definitely a six in one of these and it has eight on it and there's definitely an eight in one of these. And the other digit is five, six, seven or nine. Um... Sorry, I don't 
quite see how to do that bit either. Ah! Ah, hang on. Hang on a minute. This is a very clever puzzle. It's really unusual. It's, it's, it's... It's clearly something to do with roping, but sort of partial roping. Um, what I'm wondering now is what this bulb is, because if we look at column uh, nine, one and two have to be in those squares somewhere, which means the minimum value for this bulb is now four. The minimum value for this is now five. So the minimum value for this is now six which means it is six, because once that's a minimum value of six, that's a minimum value of seven, but we know one of those squares is a six. So that is a six, and this is a four five pair. That must follow. Now that's, that's quite peculiar. Right, so what's that, done to, what's that done to the world down here then? That's at least seven, so this can't be seven. There is definitely an eight in this domino. That six is coming out of here. We could have we could have done that before, because um, we did know there was a six in one of these squares. Five, five. Where's five in this column? <laughs> it's just, it's sort of just it's it's becoming a bit Sudoku. -y. I mean, it's outrageous, GB Pack, to make me do Sudoku in your Sudoku puzzle. Um, those squares have to be from 7, 8, and 9, because they see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So these are very high digits. We know one of them is definitely 8, because of Sudoku. Um, how do we do that then? How do we do this? Let me just think about this again. 5 comes out of that square. That square can't be six, so this is this is right down now to seven or nine. Oh, I see, but that's fine. That's just going to be the digit that's not eight on this thermo. Sit ah, here we go. Six has to come out of that square, so that can't be seven anymore. So this is now right up to eight or nine. Um. Hmm, okay, I don't know how to do that. Can I? No, I don't, still don't think I know how to resolve orange, do I? Because this thermo is still under pressure. I mean, if there's an 8 in this domino at the end of this thermo, then there's an 8 in one of those squares, which certainly couldn't go there. So there'd be an 8 in one of these two positions in column 4. But that... This is weird again, though, because what am I missing now? Because there's... I don't understand. Is it the same, is it the same with this thing? Yeah, it is, isn't it? I think. Right, where do... I'm going to actually delete. I'm going to use purple up here because I like purple as a colour and it's not really done anything. Those three digits, where do they go in this row? And again, we can immediately rule them out of those five squares because they can't be on the same thermometer as themselves and they can't go in their own box. Now... Ah, no, okay, I'm wrong. I was wrong about this. I thought that was going to be good because I, th in my brain, I'd seen this one, two pencil mark and I thought, well, that can't be a purple digit because obviously that this is at least, or well, it's actually not, that's at least a four, in fact. One, two, you can't put three there because of that. So that's at least a four. That's at least a five. That's a, uh, that can't be five because of that digit. So that's at least a six, and that's at least a seven. Yeah, I mean, this is, that's not enough. That's not enough. If I'd have been able to get rid of four from this square, that would have been huge, because then that digit could not have been purple. But in this row, three of these four squares is purple. Four. 
four in this note. <laughs> I was wondering if it was Sudoku again. Um, ah, all right, let's do this the other way then this time. Let's look at those two digits. Right, I'm going to get rid of these. I'm going to reuse my purple. Those digits, where did they go in this row? Because these digits can't go there. I, that's weird. You get an extra restriction. Um, you get an extra cell of benefit. So here, we got five cells of benefit. If we pick these two, we get six cells that we can rule out of being purple. I suppose we've got one less cell to count. But now, now this must be a problem here. One of these is at least a five. It can't be that one, can it? Yeah, where, where do purple... We can't make this digit a purple... We can't make that digit a purple digit. Because that's going to put seven here. Eight, nine, ten. That breaks the thermo. So those two digits are those two digits. And therefore, one of them... That digit is at least a five now. I'm not sure whether it's possible. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. It might... No! That's lovely. That's lovely. Okay, so where does this five go? We know it's in one of these two squares. If it goes in the bulb, that is a seven, eight, nine triple, and that's going to break our little friend here. It couldn't exist. So the five has to go there. This digit is a one or a two, only by dint of the fact it can't be a three or a four. So that's a one or a two. And now we can re-pencil mark the end of this thermo, which has got to be either... It's got two options into each place, I think. And that, well, that's lovely. Okay, because now now let's revisit row three. This is brilliant. This is just a brilliant puzzle. It's very clever in a strange way. Um, so these squares are now a seven, eight, nine triple. So that square is a six. So this square is not a six, which means... What does that mean? That can't be a five, because that would, that would force this up too high. And therefore that can't be a four because it would force this up too high. So the bottom of this thermo is getting a little... Ah, no, <laughs> this digit is now coming out of here. So, oh, that doesn't do that one though. That's weird. Okay, uh, I don't... Oh, it's because the six was already here, look. So it was already having an effect. So this thermo has come right down in terms of its ability to be things. We've got, well, what have we got? How can we now, can we now fill in the puzzle or is it still going to be recalcitrant? It's probably going to be a bit recalcitrant, isn't it? What? Well, well now, okay, now these digits, we can use them in row, row two because none of these can be a four. So one of these has to be a six. Yeah, I mean, obviously that's that one. I mean, why, why do I do it that way? Tell me why I do it that way, rather than just looking at the fact I've got to put a six into, into row two. I mean, I am, it's just very odd. Um, anyway, the, <laughs> these two squares now have to go in those two positions in row two, which means that one is not a one or a two. Oh, hang on, I didn't mean to do that. I wanted to say this one is not a one or a two. So that one is a one or a two. Let's get rid of our pencil marks. That square is now 7, 8 or 9. But we know it's not 8 because 8 is on this thermo. Which, is that doing some magic or, for us or not? Hmm, I don't know. Probably is. 4 is in one of those two squares in box 2. Uh, that's because 4 has to be in one of these three squares in box 1. So it bounces back and this 4 knocks out that square. So 4 is in one of two places. 5 is up here, but that feels that feels like a pencil mark too far to me. Um, that We know that digit is that digit, don't we? Um, I don't know again. I don't know again what to do next. Ah, oh, that's what I really, I really like puzzles. Oh, six. Six in this box is a bit restricted. 
by that one and that one. So six is in this domino. Well, that is useful. I was about to say, I doubt that does much, but it does do something. It resolves this digit. So that's got to be seven, eight, nine. That place, ah, ah, okay. So now I do get some eights around the grid and I've identified that eight is the highest digit in orange. So this square can't be nine anymore. And that square has got to be six or seven. And I don't know if we know which one of those it is. We probably do somehow. Nine, can we do nine? We now know nine is in blue. So we know nine is in this domino. Where is, where's nine in this box actually? Is that worth asking? It might not be, but I, I can see it's not in any of, it's not in this L pentomino because of this seven, eight, nine triple. So it's not there and by this nine, it's not here. So it's in one of those two squares, which actually is not doing anything at all. Bobby. Um, okay, let's six is slightly restricted in box in this box in the central box it's got to be there in one of these two again that's just straight sudoku five is in one of these squares in blue um wow i don't know Seven. Oh, that's seven. Let's fix that square. That's an eight. Okay, so Sudoku is helping us. Thank you, Sudoku. Eight has to go there now. Uh, in in row six, nine. Ah, okay. So nine and six are in the same. Oh no, this is good. Look, there's a six nine pair in box um, four, but that square can't be nine because it's on a white dot. It would need to have an eight next to it. It's the only consecutive digit. So that's six. That's nine. That square is five or seven. And I think we get to say bobbins because that seemed, both of those seem to be possible. That square's eight by Sudoku. That square's, aha, that's seven. So that's five, that's four, that's three, that's two. And that's one. Look, box, bo this box is getting resolved just by our fair weather friend Sudoku. Um, yeah. Eight has to be here. This column feels very much. That square's a naked single. It can't be one or four by Sudoku. So this is a one four pair at the top of the grid. That's a nine by Sudoku. Um, oh, that was quite exciting for a moment. And can we use that? that? Right, if that's seven, eight, we know that's nine. We know that's eight from our pencil marking. That's become a seven. Seven is in this domino. Um, okay, that's that. What do we do with that? No, I was about to say, th no, three is good. Three is not in the corner. Three in this box though, we can place because we've got double three here. So that's a three. We need two, five and nine. That's a naked single. It sees two, nine, so that's a five. And this is a two nine pair, which I'm sure is resolved. I just have to figure out why. Ah, there we go. Two, two, nine. One in the corner, two here. Let's let's abandon all pencil marks and just fully that's this is a seven, eight, nine triple. So that square is a seven. That's an eight, that's a nine. This is one, three, four is a triple. We can do a little bit of tidying. It's not impossible now that this puzzle might might have yielded its secrets. This is a two or a three by Sudoku. That's a two or a three. Yeah, where does four go in row four? It's got to go there. Can we... Yeah, nine, nine in box nine is done. Oh, I could have done that from the red digits once I'd identified them, but I forgot. <laughs> I forgot that I knew things about red digits. Um, I, know, I know I've got to put five in blue, so that's got to go there. This is a six or a seven, it now can't be a seven. So that's a six, which means that's a six. 
And these two squares, well, four, four goes in the corner, not three, and that's a seven. So four, eight, seven is what we need in orange. And five, six, nine, we can put the nine in and, and the six and the five in blue. And that's not a two in, in green. It's probably going to be this, isn't it? What? Yeah, look, um, one feature of consecutive digits that I will share with you is that they always include an even number. You can pick any two consecutive digits you like. You'll find one of them is even. Which even Sudoku digit can we put on this dot? Well, we can't put four, six or eight on it. So there must be a two on it and that must be there. Wow. So that's a two and that's a one or a three which we can do something with one three pair in column five so that's a four and we must know that digit is that no that digit isn't i was just going to say it's six but it's clearly not that digit is five actually by sudoku the two here gives me a three one three two three one one that digit's a four yeah it's it's it, yeah, we, I think we've done it. We've done it now, haven't we? That's a one. We need three, five, and seven. So that's five. That's seven. That's three. What a beautiful puzzle. And I don't just mean chromatically. That was very clever. It's a very clever piece of setting. I hope I've got it right. I have. You solved the puzzle. Um, 99 people have solved it in 11 days. So we're averaging at about nine a day. I think that's going to go up now. Um, that's just gorgeous. It's just gorgeous. It it's unusual as well. I, I mean, I could see this very quickly. That was very clear. And that was nice that it gave the 4-8 pair. I could not see what then, what next to do. I mean, it felt like it was going to be this. I couldn't see how to use that. Then it felt like it was going to be this. But I, th I think I focused on the wrong digits or I haven't understood. Maybe I haven't understood how that digit affects this thermo. And in the end, what did I do? I think I thought about where those digits, yeah, where, yes, it's my red digits. That was the key. The key to solving this is red digits. I'm sure you're all going to agree. Let me know in the comments if you do. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.